In the thrilling aftermath of Starship Flight 4's success, SpaceX is speeding ahead with groundbreaking preparations for Flight 5, slated for no earlier than July. The heat tiles of Ship 30 are being replaced, and the launch pad is undergoing inspections and repairs to ensure readiness for the upcoming launch. The construction of the second launch tower has reached a significant milestone this past week. The new 35-engine booster hardware was spotted, and SpaceX's latest economic statistics reveal significant investments in Cameron County. Join us as we delve into these latest developments and much more. Following the anomalies caused during Starship 29's atmospheric re-entry phase in IFT-4, SpaceX is replacing all thermal protection system tiles on the subsequent Ship 30 with new and more durable ones. Teams have already removed nearly all 18,000 tiles from Ship 30 inside the high bay and started installing the stronger replacement tiles. This new tile system incorporates a layer of silicon felt ablative material underneath, which will act as a secondary heat shield that ensures the ship remains protected even if the tiles crack or detach during re-entry. The silicon felt ablative material has a very high melting point, allowing it to withstand extreme temperatures before breaking down. The material was actually tested during Flight 4 by replacing one of Ship 29's tiles to evaluate its performance under atmospheric re-entry conditions. A ceramic mat is placed over the ablative material, followed by the installation of the new stronger heat tiles. The mat not only insulates the ship's stainless steel structure from conducted heat, but also absorbs mechanical stresses and shocks that the tiles may encounter during re-entry. This reduces the likelihood of tile damage or cracking. Elon Musk has highlighted that these new tiles are twice as strong and half as likely to crack compared to the previous versions, significantly enhancing the ship's heat resistance and structural integrity. The new, the new tiles are about twice as strong or hopefully half as likely to, to crack or come off and uh, we're going to put a, like I said, a secondary ablative material below the tiles so that if a tile does crack or come off it's got a good shot of returning. In addition to addressing tile durability, SpaceX is focusing on reinforcing the flap areas and sealing hinge gaps to prevent flap destruction during extreme re-entry conditions. Apart from replacing the tiles, a Raptor vacuum-optimized engine was replaced on Ship 30 two weeks ago. Although the specific reasons for the replacement remain unclear, it is possible that SpaceX identified issues with the engine during the static fire test conducted last month. The engine replacement necessitated another round of static fire testing for Ship 30 to ensure the new engine's functionality and reliability. The test will be performed on the new test stand at the Massey's test site. Super Heavy Booster 12, which will propel Ship 30 into space, is currently inside the Mega Bay undergoing preparations for Flight 5. Having completed its cryogenic proof testing, this booster will soon perform a full 33-engine static fire test on the launch mount. The static fire testing will pave the way for the full stack wet dress rehearsal, followed by Flight 5 liftoff, currently targeted for late July. At the launch site, teams continue inspecting the launch pad infrastructures for any damage incurred during Flight 4's liftoff and executing the necessary repairs. Significant attention has been directed toward the booster quick disconnect mechanism, which supplies electrical power and propellants to the booster. The booster hold-down clamps, removed from the launch mount after Flight 4, were replaced with new ones over the past week. These clamps provide a stable and secure anchoring mechanism for the booster during the initial stages of launch preparation and hold the rocket firmly until liftoff. The launch tower arms underwent minor repairs and fixes following the successful completion of Flight 4. These routine adjustments ensure that the arms remain in optimal condition for handling starships and boosters. The next flight test will feature the first ever attempt to catch the super heavy booster with the launch tower arms. Musk mentioned that there is a 50% chance of a successful booster catch during Flight 5. If the booster fails to target the tower or encounters issues that prevent a tower catch, SpaceX will redirect it for an ocean landing. Following the tower arm repairs, teams shifted their focus to the Starship Quick Disconnect arm on the launch tower. The arm sustained minor damages during the Flight 4 liftoff. Using a crane, teams lifted the quick disconnect umbilical, conducted a thorough inspection, noted the damages, and reseated it on the arm. Necessary fixes to the umbilical and the quick disconnect arm will be carried out in the coming days to prepare for Flight 5. Overall, the launch site and pad infrastructure did not suffer significant damage during Flight 4 and are expected to be ready for upcoming tests and launches without substantial delays. The construction of the second Starship launch pad and tower is advancing swiftly at the launch site. Following the completion of the Tower 2 foundation work, teams began the construction of the tower base, upon which the tower sections will be stacked. The four corner columns were installed first, followed by the addition of wall sections that connect these columns. 
Unlike Tower 1, which featured a concrete base reinforced with steel shielding, Tower 2's base columns and walls are made from steel structures. These steel structures will be filled with concrete in the coming days to enhance stability. Once the base structure is finalized, the process of stacking the individual tower sections will begin. SpaceX will use a Demag CC8801 crane for this task, known for its impressive lifting capacity of 1,600 tons. Teams have already begun assembling the crane components at the launch site. The base of the crane has been completed, and teams are currently assembling the boom, with the assistance of another crane on site. Seven of the nine sections of Tower 2 are already stationed at the Sanchez site, ready to be transported to the launch site when the tower assembly begins. The final two sections, along with the tower arms carriage and the tower arms themselves, have departed from Kennedy Space Center on a barge. They are expected to arrive at the port of Brownsville by the 23rd and will subsequently be transported to Starbase. Tower 2 is projected to stand at a towering 172 meters, significantly taller than the existing launch tower, which measures 146 meters. This increased height is crucial to accommodate the evolving configurations of the Starship and booster, anticipated to reach heights of 140 to 150 meters when fully stacked for launch. During the Flight 4 webcast, SpaceX officials mentioned that both launch pads will draw propellants from the existing horizontal tank farm. Since Flight 3, we've made a few more upgrades helping to bring Prop Farm 2.0 online. That's just going to help us to continue to shorten the amount of prop time. We're also going to be using it for launch tower number 2 which is going to be coming to Starbase real soon. In line with this, a new propellant storage tank, stored at the Sanchez site for the past couple of weeks, was delivered to the launch site on Wednesday morning. Another horizontal tank, currently stored at Sanchez, is expected to be transported to the launch site in the coming days to meet the requirements of Pad 2. Meanwhile, the decommissioning process of the old tank farm, paused for the Flight 4 launch, has resumed. The outer shell of one of the oxygen storage tanks was scrapped on Tuesday afternoon. Currently, only three tanks remain at the old tank farm, all previously used for storing liquid oxygen. In my previous video, we discussed SpaceX's plans to increase the number of engines on the Super Heavy Booster to 35 and on the Starship to 9. Recently, RGV aerial photography captured images of a 35-engine booster hardware at SpaceX's Massey's facility. This hardware is believed to be part of a booster thrust simulator. A booster thrust simulator is essentially a test stand equipped with hydraulic rams designed to apply force to the booster's aft section during cryo-proof testing. This testing allows engineers to gather crucial data on the booster's structural resilience under various stresses during flight. The current thrust simulators use 13 hydraulic rams to replicate the thrust of the booster's inner 13 engines. However, the new hardware spotted at Massey's has 15 spots for hydraulic rams. This indicates that future 35-engine boosters will have 15 engines on the inside and 20 engines on the outside. This animation provided by the space engineer illustrates the engine layout and how the inner engines will gimbal during different flight phases to steer the booster. SpaceX's latest graphics reveal that these new Block 2 boosters will be 1.3 meters taller than their predecessors and will include a redesigned hot stage ring. During Flight 4, the hot stage ring was jettisoned post-stage separation to reduce the booster's weight, allowing for a more precise and controlled landing. Future Block 2 boosters will incorporate an integrated lightweight hot stage ring that won't need to be jettisoned. The SpaceX graphic presented here shows the potential design of this new hot stage ring. Super Heavy Booster 15's oxygen tank stacking has commenced inside the Mega Bay. The methane downcomer is also being prepared for installation inside the oxygen tank of Booster 15. The downcomer that runs through the oxygen tank carries liquid methane from the main methane tank to the engines located at the base. Following the completion of the oxygen tank stacking, the methane tank stacking phase will begin, culminating in the integration of both tank sections to finalize Booster 15. As per current developments, Booster 15 will be the inaugural booster to launch the taller and more advanced second-generation Starship prototype into space. One of the forward flaps of that second-generation Starship, which will be launched atop Booster 15, was delivered to Starbase last month. SpaceX's official graphics indicate that Starship V2 flaps will feature significant improvements over V1 flaps. Their location will be shifted leeward and further forward to improve the moment arm and enhance control during re-entry. For a deeper dive into the advancements of the next-generation Starship and booster prototypes, check out the links in the description to explore my previous videos on the subject. SpaceX's latest economic impact statistics for Starbase, shared by the Cameron County Judge's Office, highlight significant investments made by the company in the region over recent years. 
SpaceX has invested over $3 billion in infrastructure at Starbase, contributing to an annual gross economic market value exceeding $6.5 billion. These investments have also generated over $800 million in state and local government capital income and indirect business taxes. Starbase has created over 3,400 direct jobs and over 21,400 indirect jobs. Additionally, SpaceX has invested an additional $400 million for the Star Factory and office space currently under construction. In short, SpaceX's transformative investments in Starbase, fostering extensive job creation, economic growth, and infrastructure development, underscore their pivotal role in advancing aerospace innovation and prosperity in Cameron County. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. In a significant development, NASA and Boeing have decided to extend the Boeing Starliner spacecraft stay at the International Space Station to address technical issues and conduct additional testing. The Starliner crewed flight test mission, carrying NASA astronauts Barry Wilmore and Suni Williams, was successfully launched atop an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida on June 5. However, during its journey to the ISS, the spacecraft encountered thruster malfunctions and helium leaks in its propulsion system. Five of the spacecraft's 28 reaction control system thrusters malfunctioned during the approach to the ISS, causing the spacecraft's computer to shut them down. Four of these thrusters were later restored, but one remains offline. Additionally, five small helium leaks were detected in the spacecraft's propulsion system, potentially affecting its overall performance. Despite these issues, the spacecraft successfully docked with the ISS on June 6, allowing Wilmore and Williams to join the seven-member crew already aboard the station. Originally, the plan was for Starliner to undock and return Wilmore and Williams to Earth on June 18. However, the undocking has now been postponed to June 25 to allow NASA and Boeing to address and rectify the technical problems. To gain a better understanding of the thruster performance, a hot fire test of seven of the eight aft facing thrusters was conducted the past week while Starliner was docked to the ISS. This test confirmed the thrusters' functionality for post undocking maneuvers and deorbit burn, despite one thruster remaining offline. NASA and Boeing are also actively investigating the helium leaks and making necessary adjustments, expressing confidence that they can be managed. Starliner has more than seven times the required amount of helium needed for the remainder of the mission, and the leak rates were observed to be lower during the recent hot fire test compared to earlier in the mission. The additional days docked at the ISS provide engineers with time to analyze data and monitor telemetry from the Starliner, ensuring the spacecraft's health and readiness for a safe return. This extended stay also allows Wilmore and Williams to perform extra activities to better understand Starliner's capabilities, contributing valuable insights for future missions. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.